YouTube or stay there. All right, what's going on? Sorry, I was talking to TikTok. We are live here on YouTube. Um, tell us where you're from. Give us a shout out. Where are you guys from? I'm here with Dusters, if you didn't see by the name. Well, let's let people go on actually 15 seconds. Nobody's on yet. They'll be on a second, but I'm here with Dusters. Nobody's watching. We got nobody. 100 people up there and nobody here. We'll get um, there. We will. So we're going to go live. We're going oh, to one, one, one. So we're going to let us know where you're from. We are going to be talking about real estate investing. We're going to be talking about the number one thing you need to do if you want to get in real estate investing. Literally the number one thing. Let us know where you're from. We're me and Dustin are going to be talking. We're going to give a market update, but then we are going to talk about the number one thing you need to do if you want to get in real estate investor. We're not going to give you a list of 10 things. We're not going to give a list of five things. We're going to give you a list of the one thing to do. What, one. You, barely. <laughs> what count to one? He can barely do that. So we're going to give you the um the one thing you need to do if you want to get invested in real estate, we're going to we're going to tell you it because it literally changed Dusty's life. So give us a let us know where you're from. Give us a thumbs up if you're on Facebook and share a video um, and make sure to comment. Let us know where you're from. And then if you're on YouTube, make sure you're um, liking and subscribing our stuff and commenting on there as well. Let's let's spread this out as many. We want to help as many people as we can. Oh, all right. There's so a let's get some. Oh, yeah. Well, the comments are here. There, oh, there's okay. comments. Don't worry. Okay. So I see some questions. Keep the questions coming. We're going to get to them eventually. We've got Rockford, Illinois. Um, we're going to get to those questions here in a minute. Keep the questions coming. We're going to scroll. We're going to scroll and get to all the questions. Wow. John Corey from Windsor. We got Texas. We got Orlando. Chi Town. What's going on? Chi Town. Danny's up in Chi Town. Omaha. Good evening. What's going on? Keep them coming. Let us know where you're from. We like to see where everyone's from. We got California. STL. STL Illinois. Go. San Antonio. Huntsville. Arkansas. I know it's not Arkansas. That's a joke. Um, some more STLs. Oosh. Yeah, so funny. <laughs> What exactly is other people money? We're going to answer all those questions. So keep questions. Let us know where you're from. Um, keep your questions coming. They keep coming. So we got people from all over. That's awesome. So um, let us know where you're from. Let's give a market update. We're going to get to all your questions. Put your questions in there. We're going to answer every single one. Put your questions in the chat box. Make sure to like, share, and comment this. Like I said, um, let's give a market update. But let us know where you're from. Keep the comments coming and put your questions in there. We will get to all of them. I promise. I take back. Wave the tick tock. We're TikTok. on YouTube if you want to see what we're doing. Down there. Down there. Um, up there. Um, so anyways, here we are. Uh, so Dusty, how's the market right now from your perspective? Uh, the market in our area is absolutely phenomenal still. Every, anything, most everything, if it's rehabbed well, it's gone in a couple days. We have less than 30 days of continuous inventory in our area. If not, what is it, five, four or five weeks worth yeah. of inventory of anything it, under 300,000? less than a month. Yeah, less than a month for the inventory. So anything done and done right is flying. Yeah. Awesome. So if you're just logging on, thank you for logging on. We're going to be talking real estate investing. We're going to be talking about the number one thing, not a list of five, not a list of 10, the number one thing. If you're on Facebook, give us a thumbs up and we would appreciate that and a share. If we get enough thumbs up on Facebook, Dusty will take a pull of this. I don't know. I'm no, we got to oh. get incentivized oh. people. Oh, incentive. All right. Um, so market, yeah, from my perspective, the market's hot as well. I talked to other people around the country and it's hot pretty much everywhere. Um, I have not seen signs of softening, I would say, but if something's overpriced and it's not nice, it's not quite selling. But if it's like you said, if it's priced right or it's a super nice house, it's selling right. pretty much any price range right now. So the market is hot. What about the rental market, Dusty? How's your uh, rental market? Rental market is phenomenal as well. I don't have uh, whenever we put a market or house on the market. Excuse me. It's uh, we're getting you know ten to fifteen showings the first day, if not more, and we're getting a ton of qualified applicants right off the bat. For sure. Awesome. So keep keep it coming. Where you guys are from. Um, let us know. I don't like all that stuff being highlighted. Midland, Texas, Bronx, New York. We have no rehabs in my area for sure. So we're going to get to all your questions. Let us know where you're from. Um, Alex, pump for the RIA tonight, foreshadowing. That's what that's we're right. talking about. Tomorrow. We're talking about RIAs tonight, which is the number one thing. Wisconsin, what state are you from? We're in St. Louis, Missouri. So we live in St. Louis, um, Missouri. Keep the questions coming. Uh, TikTok's above us. If Hey, TikTok, if you want to stay there, great. If not, go to YouTube under Faster Freedom and interact with us there. Indiana. Here's a, so market in Ontario, Canada selling for 75 to 1,000, 100,000 over asking. So in the North America, not just um, uh, United States, things are selling like crazy. I, I have a very good close friend that just told me the same thing the other day. He's from California, and they're putting in offers 100K over asking and losing. That is insane. Arizona, I was just in Arizona, Tara. I was just in Phoenix, Arizona, um, Scottsdale, Arizona area. So thank attempting you. To play golf, attempting right? to play golf, failing miserably. I'm sore from playing golf. Um, Costa Mesa, awesome. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, appreciate it. Let us know where you're from. We're going to be having an amazing 
conversation. We're going to answer a ton of questions. We're also going to say the number one thing you need to do when it comes to real estate investing. Before we go any farther, let's give our fun intro because I just like to do it. All right, so. keep the thumbs up going. So anyways, that was our fun little thing that I like. We'll do the market update. So keep the questions coming. We're going to get to all of them. Keep your questions coming. We're going to be chatting real estate investing. So who is Dusters? Tell us. Now you have time to take a little time. I feel like we kind of rushed the TikTok. But this, so tell us where you're from. Or tell uh, us that you're from St. Louis, obviously. But I'm tell a us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I'm a local uh, here, born and raised. Do in your story. Go Louis. back to three years ago. All what right. happened? Three years ago, I was a newly divorced single dad of four kids under the age of, at that point, man, that would have been eight. eight. Yeah. Yeah eight five five and three i guess i mean it's been wild but newly divorced dad uh of four and went to my local meetup and uh started real estate that local meetup absolutely changed my life what'd you do that night uh, i went for a run at the time i was not fat like i am currently now or fluffy i uh, went for a run of right around 30 miles uh that night after i got done with my local real estate meetup and i was just completely mind broken my adhd was on complete overload and I could not sit still, so I went out for a run to try to get my mind right. You saw the power of real estate. Yep. The, your mind opened up. His very small mind, I have made fun of him. I made fun of him on TikTok a lot. Not on YouTube. I yeah. have made fun of him on YouTube. Keep going. His very small, pea-sized brain was blown. Um, he went from a size of a pea to a size of a grape, and he learned a ton. Of, he just opened his mind, which is incredibly powerful. And some people get their mind open, and some people don't take advantage of it. You took advantage of it. So... But we'll go back to that mm -hmm. night here in a little bit. But three years ago, you had zero rental properties. And you knew a little yep. bit. You were pretty handy, but that was about it. Yeah, it was. And then three years ago, almost to the day, flash yep. forward three years ago, how many rentals do you have and how many properties have you bought wholesale and how many rental or how oh, many man. flips have you done? Uh, I've got 35 rental doors as of today. In three years, in guys. In three years, uh, with my portfolio being worth just under $4 million, 3.6 or 3.8, I believe, as of today. And uh, I flipped another, let's say, 24 properties and wholesaled another 50. In All last... from a guy who can't count to 10. Yeah. So that Ooh. tells you the power of real estate. So he learned that, and I always kid with Dusty, but he took such action in those three years. It's incredible what he's done. <laughs> and that leads us back to, let's go to a couple more questions, and then, we're gonna, and then we're going to talk about the number one thing you must do if you want to invest in real estate. Let's get a few more questions crushing it, guys. He is definitely crushing it. And then we're going to answer some questions, Boise, Idaho. So keep the questions. How do you find local meetups? Awesome. We're going to get to all those questions. But first, let's um, let's get, uh, where is it? The number one thing you must do, and then we're going to answer questions, and we'll go back to this. The number one thing you have to do, whether you want to fix and flip, whether you want to wholesale, whether you want to have rentals, whatever you want to do. The number one thing, and it's only one, that you need to do is you need to join your local real estate investing meetups. They will literally change your life. We kind of had a little bit of a um, spoiler alert this saying what Dusty did three years ago. But literally, he I'm not going to say he was broken by any means because Dusty is a very strong individual, but he was at a lower point in his life. Yeah. 33 years old, living in his parents' basement. He was obviously going to make it because he had a good job. He just was sold his house and got divorced. Yeah. But living in a short term, but you live in your parents' basement. Zero rental properties, which is fine how most people are. But in these three years, you obviously found home support. It yep. helped a ton. But you literally changed your life and your kid's life and your kid's kid's life. Think about right. that. You know, all your, your four beautiful kids, they're all lives. Their kids' lives are going to be better because of what you're doing right now. That's, that's my goal. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, it's absolutely crazy. I would have never thought that one meeting uh, in a little town hall in the middle of nowhere, St. Charles, Missouri, would have changed my life. Would have never thought that going into it. I was just kind of was a tire kicker and had no uh, true, you know, real ambition that this was going to be absolutely altering. And by the end of the evening, I was pissed that I didn't start this 10 or 15 years earlier. For sure. All right. Um, so we're going to say where to find meetups and then we're going to get to questions because I okay. think there's probably about 40 of them that are sitting yeah, waiting for us. We'll so, get there. Um, I take talks. I had a TikTok. Oh, talk. Back to TikTok. Say up there. We're going to repeat the questions or go to YouTube and log yeah, on live really and interact with those us. questions. No. <laughs> All right. So where do you find me? If you find me, if you go to meetup.com right now, unfortunately, they're only advertising their 
virtual meetups, but there are in-person meetups in most cities right now. And you join those local real estate investing Facebook groups and ask there, and then also just Google them, local real estate investing meetups, because it might surprise you if you're in a decent sized town, almost every single night of the week, your burps stink. Almost every single night of the week, Yes, I know. Almost every single night of the week, there's a group of people meeting, discussing real estate investing. Make sure to give us a like and a share on um, YouTube and Facebook if you're on there. But it's crazy. If you're not in the industry, you don't know that. But literally, almost every single night of the week, somebody as a group of people is meeting. Sometimes it's a group of 10 or 20. Sometimes a group of 200 is meeting, discussing real estate. Agreed. So let's get to the questions now. Um, we'll scroll back to the top. Holy We're going to get to them. If you ask them earlier, keep them coming. Um, keep them coming for sure. Um, here's the first question that was asked a long time ago. Chris, do you have, I'll read, cause I know Dusty has trouble reading. Oh, I'll read reading it. Reading is not my strong suit. Do you have a good credit score to get hard money loans? How do you get approved for them? And then how do they determine who can get these loans? Do you want to go or you want me to go? Uh, we'll tag team it. Okay. So, um, most hard money lenders will look for credit scores, but I've seen them and I know a few in St. Louis, they say no credit scores, no background checks. So there are some that will not check your credit or your background. They're usually a little bit higher interest rates and usually maybe once you bring money to the table a little bit, but that's still, there is possible to get loans from people. Private lenders won't usually look at credit score and hard money lenders, some will, some won't. I would say most will I'd say you. I, I agree with the most will, but you don't have to have a completely amazingly high, you know, 800 credit score. That's not a must. Uh, you can, you can obviously have an active credit history and as long as you can prove that you can do you know payments on time and you don't have a lot of dings you don't have a lot of you don't have any foreclosures or bankruptcies or uh collections you know that's going to look good upon yourself getting this this type of loan for sure keep the questions we're going to get to all of them um we, we talked about local real estate investing meetups we can bounce back on that but we got another 45 to 50 minutes to talk. So keep your questions coming. We'll get to all of them. Get off your phone. All right. What is the best thing to do after you buy a house and have profit in it? So I'll go first and then let you bounce. It depends on what your goal is. If your yeah. goal is to hold to have rental properties, keep it as a rental and hold that profit as equity that you would eventually tap into. If you're wanting immediate cash right now, sell it. Yeah. I, pretty it, it, it really depends on the your business model and your plan. Like right now I'm adding rentals. I have very little ambition to flip a house for the retail market but that's just where my business is at right now. Awesome. Um, John, yes, we will answer your question. Um, throw it in there and maybe we'll get to, I'm scrolling down from the top. What exactly does other people's money mean? Mm. It's hard money lenders and private money lenders. Dusty, you explain the um, Hard money lenders is a business. They they have a brick and generally a brick and mortar building or et cetera. It's like a bank for investors. Other people's money is private money like friends of friends or friends of family or acquaintances that have extra money that are interested in real estate and after you get a small let's say a small portfolio up they will start hunting you what the easiest way i found to find private money is tell people what you do hey i'm a you know just start with an easy sentence when you start meeting people hey i'm a local real estate investor if you know you you find a b and c boom i'm your guy and you just keep sharing that information to people and people will come searching for you 100%. Great way to answer. Do you need good credit to invest in real estate? No. You can literally have a zero credit score and wholesale or um, use private lenders to fix and flip or use hard money to fix and flip in some cases. It helps have good credit if you want to own rentals and in general, it helps have good credit. But what, what say you on that one, Dusty? Uh, yeah, I, I agree with Sam. You don't have to have a perfect credit history. You know, as I had already said in this, I was a newly divorced dad and didn't have anything really to my name other than my personal belongings and my tools and my kids clothes that's really all I own so the you know credit score really isn't the end-all be-all to have a solid one but just proof and concept if you can pay your bills and pay them on time not have collections and you know everything else that's extra baggage you won't have that great a difficulty to find a hard money lender awesome our market's oversaturated, so I'll answer it and I'll hand it off to Dusty. Our market's oversaturated with demand. I wouldn't say they're oversaturated. The deals are a little bit harder to come across, but we buy 200 houses a year. And I know, especially if, if you're newer into real estate, Jason, I don't know if you are or not, but if you're wanting to buy two to five houses a year, you can do that if you get involved in the meetups and everything we talk about. You can definitely do that. You take it on the top of Absolutely. Uh, the market in our area is not necessarily oversaturated be, uh, with demand, but uh, we definitely have a shorter got to put this it's not that we're oversaturated but we have a shortage of demand on the market but there are definitely people that are continually buying even in this climate let's see what we got for the next one 
Let's see. What's the best way to find cash buyers? Honestly, if you're a new wholesaler, you can hit your local real estate meetups, like even at ours, which is tomorrow night here in St. Louis. You, we have a haves and wants section that uh, we'll bring you up to the front and say, you know, what do you have to sell? And there's going to be 200 like-minded individuals in that room that are looking to buy houses that you might have to sell. If that doesn't work for you, there's Facebook in our area. There's um, 90 people yeah, watching. We're not there's, even answering. Right, questions. they're not even answering. There's, uh, you can use Facebook. There's probably half a dozen different Facebook investment groups just in St. Louis alone. And every major metropolitan area is going to have the same thing. Awesome. Keep the questions coming. We're going to get to every single one. I want to go back if people are just logging on and just reminding if, if we said it earlier, the number one thing you need to do if you want to become a real estate investor of any kind is join your local real estate investing meetups. Go that to changed meetup. my life. Literally changes life. You need to go to meetup.com or go on Facebook or Google and just look for local real estate investing meetups. They will literally change. You can probably life. even uh, search those on Facebook too in yep. your local areas. What is the yep. lowest amount you can get started with? I had six grand in my pocket. That's what I had. I mean, I would say that you can have zero if you play your cards right. Yes. So when Dusty got started, he had six grand in his pocket and he used hard money to get yep. started because uh, he had a decent job. I, when I got started, Luke's and I got started, I had a decent job as well. And I had access to some funds, not a ton, but we didn't use them. We use a private money lender. Is that my hat? Like not even close to straight. Is That's it? fine. I think, well, you're not. Well, it's just the opposite on there. But anyways, so a, um, so we use a private money lender to purchase properties and fix them up. You don't, he didn't look at our credit score. He didn't look at my bank account. We showed him the deal and thank you for burping that way. We showed him the deal and we um, showed him that it was, uh, you know, we, we gave proved, him a proof the, of concept. proved the concept and then we've used him probably 50 times since then. And he's introduced us to other private lenders because people like to brag, Hey, I got this, these yeah. guys I invest in. I make 12% annualized. I made twenty grand on last yeah, year. Didn't have three to lift or four times a year. It's called couch cushion money. Yeah, and they that's and, what my lender calls and it. They, and they and they yeah, and they they share their friend they share with their friends. You can read this one. Same B. Uh, how to do a bird method? How to do a bird method in such a expensive inventory? My average city. Whew. So if so, yeah. all right. So the bird method can work if your properties are five hundred, six hundred thousand, but you're gonna need probably to rent for four to 5,000 a month. Uh -huh. So it does work. So the bird method works, you know, buying a property and we're not going to go into too much on the bird. That's what not tonight's about. But if you don't know what it is, you'll hopefully catch up with this quick explanation. If not, there's a ton of videos on my YouTube about it, but um, you buy a piece of property, you rehab it, you rent it, you refinance it and you repeat. So you can but do you that. You got to buy it at a discount. You got to buy it at a discount. So if you get properties at a discount in your area and they burr out, like you're into them less than 80% of what they're worth after they're fixed up and they cash flow, it can work. I know people that have three to $400,000 houses that rent for 3,500 and they cash for 350 bucks a month. Yeah, so I mean, the higher a, market's okay as long as it cash flow. If it's a $600,000, you know, ARV or after renovation value, you'd have to buy it at a minimum of 450,000 and then you got to subtract your repairs. So if it's hundred thousand dollars for repairs, you need to buy it for three fifty. But then on the backside, you need to make sure it's going to cash flow something, and the bank's going to frown. For sure. Um, so we're getting to questions. There's a ton more at the bottom. We're starting from the top going down. So if you ask a question, um, oh, a little bit recently. Way. No, this way going down. Oh, okay. Right. Um, we're going to get to them. We're going to get to your questions for how hard is it to get the contracts? Uh, contracts are easy. I have them in the center council of my truck at all times. I do not leave home without a pile of contracts because you just never know what you're going to run into. But in order to find the contracts, again, you join your local real estate investing Facebook groups. You start actually getting the contracts oh. where to find it. You join local real estate investing Facebook groups and meetups, and there's investors there that will give you the contracts yeah. for free 100%. Absolutely. Whoa, do you, oh, crap. Oh boy. All right, here we go. Very good question. Go ahead. Can do you, do you suggest? Starting rentals first or flipping? It, it really depends on what your. Great uh, answer. I know exactly where you're going with it. You're right. It really depends on what your, your end game is. You know, I wanted, when I started, I wanted passive income uh, within a, a small supplementary, uh, supplementary active income stream. So I started piling rentals on. And then as I piled a handful of rentals on, then I found a flip. So I added a flip into the adventure, I flipped it, made a little cash, put it in the pocket and moved on to start piling rentals again. Yep, for sure. Uh, Love it. Currently playing the credit repair um, company to, for repair credit score. I think that's great. Yep. I feel like I don't want need to wait in order for them to get deal started. So what advice as far as lenders help me? So some hard money lenders won't look at your credit score. 
Most private money lenders won't as well. So go those two routes if you're looking, if you're trying to build your credit, which is incredible. I always tell people, build your credit by paying a company or do it yourself, but paying companies is fine. Um, and then use hard money or private money lender to wholesale or fix and flip in the meantime while you're building it. I think that's awesome. Yay, I found you. I just saw that one. That was from earlier. Thanks. M, I'm glad you are here. What is the best thing to do to buy our house net profit? I think we answered that question, but the, it just depends on your end goal, your end right. game, right? Yeah, absolutely. What uh, the best thing to do after you buy the house and you have profit? I mean, literally, it depends on what your exit strategy is. If you're looking to make an active income stream, then you're going to flip it. If you want a passive income stream, that's couch cushion money every month, and you're going to keep it as a rental. Yep, I agree. Do you invest and rehab outside of Missouri? No. No, we just do not. Missouri. I know a ton of people that invest virtually, um, but we just invest in St. Louis just because I like to be able to drive to my Yeah, assets. St. Louis metropolitan area. Now, we it's, try it's such a good area for you, rentals. You probably try to stick within 30 minutes of your personal house, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Same for me. Yep, yep. 30 sure. minutes of my personal house. All right, Em, glad you're here too. All of, I have an idea. How do you start? Well, look, go to your local real estate investment meeting, your RIA, your local RIA. That is the fastest way to get this ball rolling. I promise you. Jason, do you think the 1% rule for investing makes sense? I, I think it's a great tool to, um, hold on, let me just get my WAP that, um, if you guys know what WAP means, you know that I have a pending lawsuit against Cardi B because I had this, I had long this before. name long before her. I'm kidding. There's no law. But anyway, it's just kind of funny. This name has been around for six years though. Um, do you use the 1% rule? I think it's a smart rule to quickly analyze something, but you need to dig into the details yeah. of cash flow, insurance, maintenance, vacancy, all that kind of stuff. But it is a good general way to analyze an investment. And the 1% rule is you need to collect 1% of how much you have in the property and rent. So if yeah. the property is worth a hundred, or if you have a hundred thousand in the property, then you need to at least collect a thousand in rent to cover yeah. your expenses. It's just a quick way to do it because for the most part, mortgage costs are the same, insurance is the same, taxes are the same. For the most part, they vary, but in general, they're similar. So that's a quick way to make sure it's going to cash flow a little bit. Yeah. Alex, thank you. Oh, God. Um, I don't know. This one. How do you find local meetups? So I think we answered that. You just you go to meetup.com and join. And then Google yeah. search them on Facebook or uh, Google search them and Facebook search them. They'll be there. For sure. Here's Tara's question. What's the best thing to do? We kind of answered we that. We got, that, we, that, that was Did we scroll great. back up? No, it's just that just these are asked 10 minutes ago. Okay, so gotcha. What is the lowest amount you can start with? And it, it's zero. It zero. really, it really Absolutely. is. Dusty had six thousand dollars in his checking account or bank savings. Yeah, that account. was that was in my personal account. I had no money in my business. I literally created a business while drinking. Actually, at the time, I was probably drinking beer in my parents' basement lower garage and created an LLC online and had no money in it. I think when I started my bank account with the LLC, I think I put five dollars in it. There you go. Yeah, I love it. it. You're on. Um, if you're on YouTube, make sure to give us a like and a share. If you're on Facebook, same like and share there as well. Make sure you're subscribing to our stuff. Um, so yeah, you don't need any money. You really don't. We have a, between the two of us, we have a $15 million rental portfolio that we built using other people's money. It's true. It yep. happened. It's not like some weird scheme. It's the bird method, the bird strategy. It's proven. It's been around for looking, looking. It's been around for a long time. Um, yeah, so it can be done. And we have go to free rental webinar .com at the bottom. I didn't even mention that it's free training on how to do it. It's a 90 minute webinar. How do you on. figure out whether to wholesale, buy or rent? It really depends on your end game. You can wholesale for active income. You can buy and rent for passive income. That's dual income streams. And you have killed two birds of one stone in the real estate investment adventure. So Dusty's seen this at meetings. If it cash flows and it's going to burr out, I'm going to keep it as a rental, as yep. you've seen, because yep. that's my end game. But I need active income. Not all of them fit that bill. We will wholesale them or fix and flip yeah, them like, if, because I need active and passive. But if it makes sense as a rental, begrudgingly to sometimes what Brian wants us to do, we keep it as a rental. Yep. And uh, the property I even closed on this morning, it's one of those that has multiple exit strategies. And I'm going to rehab it as my normal rental rehab. And then when I get to the end, we'll see what I do with it. I don't I don't really have a decision yet. I just know I got exit strategies. That's the thing when you buy a discount. Hi, you know, from Nashville, Tennessee. So Nashville, um, I'm trying to think of. I'm driving through Nashville in the morning. Tennessee, are you going down there? Okay. 
Tennessee, um, or I think it's um, Tennessee Home Buyers. I know, I know that company that buys a lot of houses in Nashville. They're, they're a big player down there. What interest rate and terms are you able to get on cash flow loans? Thirty-year fixed rate possible? Go uh, in our area. In our area, we do generally when you start, you get a twenty-five-year note with a three-year arm at somewhere around that five percent range. Probably right now, as a rookie investor, the more you get into it, and the better property values that you have in your portfolio they'll stretch you to a 25 year note. Uh, you can do 30 year fix. I'm trying to do 30 year fix, uh, but you can only have 10 of those in your personal name at any given time. So you better keep those as like little honey hole houses that you are gonna buy for an appreciation game in the long run, but you get the 30 year note to allow you to cash flow. You think Shirley's mad I'm not wearing my glasses? No, nah, you just go like this all the time. That's no, what you do. I've been watching. <laughs> um, so yeah, so. Hey, I wanna, Jose, I'm seeing you in the morning. I wanna go on a little bit of a, tangent about oh, growing boy. relationships with banks oh yeah that's important. because it's so important to we i didn't do any of my personal name they're all in my business name i paid Same. a little more in interest but i built relationships with banks and eventually i got to the point where i refinanced my entire portfolio with one bank yep for 30 years on a commercial loan with a 10-year arm amazing and so, sold out how much and pulled out eight hundred eighty thousand dollars so that's the power cool of day dealing day. with local banks because yep. that wouldn't have happened had I, you know, had, you know, money with a bunch of different banks and money yep. with them, um, you know, big banks and did all. I, I, we focused on a couple banks. We had a great relationship with one. We were able to negotiate some amazing terms that literally we pulled out 880 green and we, our cash flow went up $700,000 without having, or seven, sorry, $7,000 a month, a month. a month without having to do anything. Right. You so that yourself a raise and you a new squat. Yeah, so that's the only reason why I'm there because it's a, a 30 year fixed. It's a 30 year uh, fix with a 10 year arm. Um, so we kind of had the best of both worlds because and we develop relationships. On with top banks. of that, you need to start with your smaller local banks have less than 10 branches. Local yeah, like so, like on the your banks, outskirts of towns. You know, outskirts of your major metropolitan area. Those are the banks that love local investors and they understand it and they keep the notes in house. Like yeah. our banks, we use our. First State Bank of St. Charles. So those type of banks, um, some American American unions as well, American Bank, Bank of Missouri. Yep. So those small banks that have, you know, like Dusty said, you know, two to 10, 15 branches maybe, yep. but they're smaller, they're regional, they're, they're local. And the way they make money is through loaning money to investors and keeping the notes in house. Yep. Bank of American Commerce Bank won't do the bird method. They, they make money through depository accounts at a right. SHIT ton of interest they get every single. So right. the local banks earn their money from doing deals with people like us. What's Jose up, Jose? You're one man. of my favorites. Don't tell people about it. Um, how do you <laughs> figure out whether to wholesale buy rent? I think we answered that one. So yep. some people are repeating questions just because we get so long to get to them because there's so many, and I do apologize about that. Um, is there an, a limit? Yep, we answered that. So just kind of so, hit that one. The 30-year note, you can only have, that's a government regulation, if I remember right, mm -hmm. but you can only have 10 of them in your personal because name at any Fannie time. Because Mayor Freddie Mac, which right. are backed by the that's government. That's backed so by the government. You only have 10. Yep, you can only have 10 of those, including your personal house. So now you have nine. Yep. Jen, give us a shout out. 100% agree, local network where it's at. I'm sure we'll yep. see Jen tomorrow we'll see about local Jen investing meetup. Yep. So let's talk about that real quickly. So we said the number one thing you need to do to become a successful real estate investor, the first thing you need to do, in my opinion, is to join your local real estate investing meetups. I'll just tell you what real estate investing meetups look like. Ours is tomorrow in the St. Louis area. Um, we hope we usually have 150 to 200 people. It's usually been a, it's been a little less recently because of everything going on, which is understandable. Um, but We're what they look like? Feet of each other. You there? You should have a mask. Oh, stop it. Um, <laughs> so what you um, what you do is you show up. And there's some usually some type of networking and forced networking. You'll get to know other investors. We pay for everybody's dinner, so everybody's a free dinner. There's a cash bar to, to um, you can go to, and you're just interacting with people that are doing what you want to do actively. They're not on Facebook texting. They're in person. They met, yep. and they're actually going to make things happen. And then there's a presenter usually that speaks and gives away free, mind blowing in mind your blowing. case, absolutely um, presentations. And then afterwards, there's usually some drinks and hanging out. It's a two or three hour affair, and it can literally change your life as it changed this guy's life. So those Definitely are what those that. meetups look like. They're super, super powerful. Agreed. We'll talk a little bit the, about uh, the local meetup. The very first night, it was. Uh, I still have the original notes on my phone and then the side seat of my or the side saddle of my truck. I still have the original notes from that night about creating passive income and how many doors, how many rental doors I needed. To then step away from my w2 job and we just um keep your questions coming by the way we're starting yep. to get to where we're, we're getting caught up so keep your questions coming anything real estate investing related wholesaling they were getting there wholesaling 
rehabbing, landlording, property management. If you want to know how much rent we're collecting during COVID, whatever you'd like to know, ask them. Um, so yeah, so the real estate investing groups can literally, literally change your life and they, they, they can and they do if, if yep. people will take action on them. You have to take action. Educate yourself and take action and you'll be amazed at what you can accomplish. Even if you don't have much of a brain. Yep. Um, you talked about 100% financing a lot, which is good, but is there a hidden cost, lack of equity build, which lowers overall return? Just a thought to consider for long-term um net worth but i think i kind of get what you're saying um so yeah if you're if you're not using your own money and you're using other people's money and you're doing it on equity and um you know you're pulling out money to pay back someone else you might not have as much equity as if you put 20 percent down so that's um, a little bit true but you can scale so much quicker so we do all right for ourselves we make a decent amount of money yeah. but i'm doing you know two to five rentals a month in order to put 20% down, I would have to have an extra 100, 100 grand, grand a month yeah. to put 20% down. And that's just not possible. Yeah, it's not feasible. And if I did have that extra money a month, I wouldn't be spending it on real, you know, putting 20% right. down. I'd use other things with it. And if so, you're buying at a discount, that pretty much scratches your right. your ability, your need to put that 20% right. down. If you're, we try to buy, or we our goal to buy every house that we shoot for is 75% of market value minus repairs, or 75% of market value right. minus repairs. So if it's a hundred thousand dollar house and it needs twenty five grand, my offer price is going to start around that fifty grand mark. So then I build in my equity. Uh, there's no lack of equity then, and the bank loves us. Oh gosh, I thought we were behind on questions. We're not. Oh goodness. Yeah, we're, we're behind on questions. No, I thought like we were almost caught up. Oh, not. not a chance. All right, already on a fourplex. What's your advice? Yeah, and repeat. Get, that's incredible, Jenna. Oh, that is awesome. So she owns four doors. That's more than ninety nine percent of the population. Correct. That's incredible. Congratulations, Jenna. Um. So you see, we're getting to questions. So if you asked it earlier, we will get to, I literally haven't missed one question. We're getting to all of them. Um, so I would say rinse and repeat for sure. If you like what you did, you have good equity, you're getting cash flow, do it as many times as you freaking can, in my opinion. Yeah, and you can leverage that first adventure into your next one, you know, with a local bank. If you get a lender that doesn't check credit and get refinanced, then what do you do? Put it in your portfolio, rinse and repeat, do it again. Start the burn method all over again. If you get a lender that doesn't check credit and can't get refinanced. Oh, you can't get refinanced. Oh, yeah. So um, if you get a lender that doesn't check credit and they can't get refinanced, you can sell it on the open market yep. because if you listen to us or other people, you bought enough of a discount, there's right. equity there. You can sell it and make money or at least break even. Or, um, yeah, that's it, I guess, if you've already rehabbed it. Or that if or, you have rehabbed it, you can wholesale it. If you yeah, and if you, there's places out there like Roofstock that are, that's a, an, online, uh, an online marketplace for tenant place properties. So you can sell them on there to out of town investors. You know the answer to this one. I'm gonna say. Uh, <laughs> what do you recommend to do first? Fix, fix and flip wholesale. Honestly, your first step is depending on what your end game is. Again, we've we've answered this earlier, but if you're looking to build active income that's a nonstop, then you're gonna wholesale or flip. If you're gonna do passive income, then you can find properties at your discount and you move them from flipping into your rental portfolio. You know. It's it's really depending on what your end game is. That's on the honest the honest answer there. Uh, uh, where do you get the money for a local and do uh, where do you get the money to buy a house in the beginning? Hard money lenders. That's where I started. Um, I was a nobody, and the hard money lender here in town gave me an option or gave me a chance. And after the very first one, I had a proof of concept, and I bought three houses within ninety days. You know, the the hard money lender is a huge asset to you in the beginning. Uh, you pay a little bit of interest, but the speed of which you can get the money is incredible. So look into, you know, Google your local area with your zip codes or whatnot and look for hard money lenders. They're bound to be out there. And if you can't find them on there, then go to Facebook and, you know, search local hard money lenders. Uh, do you set up questions? Yeah, yes. great question. question. No, I don't set up low or I don't set up uh, LLCs for each one of my properties. I've got 35 of them currently and they're all in the same LLC. That's, that's a lot of properties. You stud you. Shelly's a lucky woman. I know. <laughs> Keep telling her that. Let's stop the conversation there. <laughs> all right. Um, so, uh, so that's a great question. So I don't know if I've ever been told specifically that you have to have a certain amount of properties in LLC. So I have um, three apartment complexes. They each are in their own LLC. I have a storage facility that's in its own LLC. And then I have about 55 houses in one LLC and about 15 houses in another LLC. So 
the kind of goal is I think every 50 single family houses, we're going to have our own LLC. And then each apartment complex is going to be its own LLC makes things kind of separate for, it makes a little more work for the tax man or tax woman, but it takes to keep things clean. And it's just the way we do things. And I know some people that own every one or two properties in LLC. And I know some people that have a hundred properties in one LLC. So. I'll probably be at that 30 or that 50 mark. Yeah. I think, I don't know if there's a right or wrong answer. That's just the way we do things. Man, we're, we're going we're gonna to get to all the questions. We will go, we, Dusty will be here. He'll have that whole ball going by then. What is the best way to contact sellers for wholesaling besides cold calling? Are there ways to send out bulk texts? There are ways to send out bulk texts. Just go, there's a bunch of different companies that do that. Um, But there's, there's, there's a much better way to contact um, sellers. Yeah. You, uh, deal machine. We use it in the office every day. I, I probably added five properties today just alone, but that's a driving for dollars app that we actually use in our business and we every know the, day. And we know the, I know the owner and, of deal machine, uh, so use our name faster yeah, freedom when signing inside, up. Inside a deal machine, you can actually start a drip mailing campaign as you're standing or and driving tell in front of the house. Is. Tell um, what it is. You, uh, skip tracing is a, inside of that app, you can literally click a button and it'll give you the ability to uh, find the absentee owners, mailing addresses, cell phone numbers, home phone numbers, and uh, email addresses. Yep. To where you can you can start a drip mail campaign. All legal, by the way. Yeah, it's all, all, all legal. Yeah, it's public documents. You can uh, start a drip mailing campaign as you're driving in your car at the same time you're looking for houses. I do it almost every day. Rentals can be in your LLC or they have to be in personal. And they can be in both. I suggest having them in LLC yeah. because you have the legal protection between your personal assets, your LLC, and your business. There's a yeah. layer. There's a between. layer of protection in there with that LLC. Jonah Sounds Hill's on here. Uh, I've never heard that joke before. <laughs> having a hard time finding a bank to do cash out refinance due to COVID. Any suggestions? So, due to COVID? Really? Yeah, I've heard COVID's that a little bit. an excuse for everything. Yes. Uh, so I've heard that a little bit. Um, but give it some time the banks will come back around that you're working with right now but um now's a tough time to just first start out but there are banks that will do so just don't put your head down we've had we luke's and i had 20 banks a we weren't going to the right banks. yeah you were I going to the that, wrong bank i guess that's an a that again go back to those local small small town but or small american bank banks. post no first yep but they would have told me no first too so you just have to, keep, you have to keep asking star. yeah we had 20 banks that told us no so don't give up Things will get better as this whole COVID thing plays itself out. We're not going to go into that at all. Keep your mouth shut. Right. But um, they just, you know, just understand things will get better. Just keep going to banks. You'll find one that works work through, I promise, eventually. What is the lowest amount you need to buy? So I need just to hold up a zero. Yeah, That's just always have a zero. You don't, you, don't need, you don't need money. We both did without using any of our own money. Yeah. If you're just starting out and a house doesn't sell right away, how do you cover the mortgage house? Because my current income cannot afford the vacancy. So um, that's a great question. So if you're using a private lender, you shouldn't have to pay them back until you refinance. Right. Um, using hard money lender, they're going to want monthly notes paid to them, uh, usually about a percent of month interest. Um, that's just something you got to build into your calls, Chris. Um, uh, hopefully you'll get, you'll get a tenant in there quickly. If it's a nice property, you shouldn't have any problem renting it. If you have to drop the rent a little bit to get it filled, so you're at least breaking even, I would suggest doing that. Yep, I agree. Um, keep going. We're not. We're not. We're not skipping any questions. Though. I don't know what that means. So, yeah. um, I'm 17. I get. Should I get a job when I'm 18? Save up so I could wholesale. You don't have to save. You don't up have to wholesale. save any money to wholesale. Um, That's a paperwork shuffle. So if you're 17, um, you have to be 18 to legally execute a contract. So you technically can't wholesale, but you can partner with an older sibling or a parent to wholesale. Or when you're 18, you can do it on your own because you can't write a contract if you're 17. Um, but you can do a lot. And go to those local meetups. Join those local real estate investing Facebook groups. Apparently, just, this is what you do. Yeah, we just had a 17-year-old join our mastermind, didn't we? Uh, yeah, yeah, with his dad. But yeah, yes. with Yates, yeah. Um, roughly, what kind of rates you get on hard money, 100% financing? I say hard money really, really depends. It usually ends up being between 12 and 18% after points, but usually it's around that 12% with some points on the back end. So usually it ends up being around 15%, which may sound like a lot, but a lot of private lenders are 10%, so you're paying right. five more percent. Over the life of the deal, which is hopefully two to four months, it's probably another five hundred thousand bucks. It's not the end of the world if you're buying. Yeah, a and discount. if you like, I try to time them to where I'm buying a property in the middle of the month, so then I have a month and a half before I have to make the first hard money payment. So by that time, I'm done with the rehab and have a tenant basically in place to where I'm not touching any of my money to pay that note at all. Um, I'm sorry, I need to do this for dummies. That's no problem. It's, it's, a, it's a tough concept. Step one, go meet up. Got yeah. it. 
but it's that will help. But I mean, it is a is it a hard concept? It is a hard concept to learn. But once your mind wraps around it, it's so simple. But it takes a while for people's mind to wrap around it for sure. If they don't have someone like Brian explaining it to them. Agreed, yeah, time. agreed, agreed. And so, then go ahead. Uh, to to find a lender, once you get an LLC set up, you can start reaching out to your local small banks with the right documentation and just go in with a small business plan with them and sit down and meet and greet with them. You'd be amazed at how how giving and understanding and and helping they will be and how much how many of the ropes that they'll show you and hand feed you what you need to do next for sure for sure um and then also go to, go go to seriously go to the free rental webinar.com let's scroll across the bottom it's oh, it a, is scrolling down. it's an 80 that. minute webinar that i put on i poured at 2 30 in the morning right there in my office because uh, i was pumped i had my alarm set for six to get up and do it but i woke up and i was like i want to do this now it's an incredible webinar there's giveaways that I, I walk you through how to do your first rental property at the end you can schedule a call with me and we talk about a rental academy that can literally change your life it's a 10-week course that we teach that you get lifetime access to us teaching. So theoretically, in two years, if you signed up now for it, you could have seen us give this the 10 week presentation with updated information freaking 10 or 15 times. It's incredible value. But go to that free rental webinar first. What podcast do you recommend waking up? Why don't you answer this one first? What, what do you think? Well, our podcast, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our podcast. It just depends on what you're interested in. But if you're looking for real estate podcasts, you can start with ours and you can find a whole gamut of other ones out there between. Uh, deeper pockets and bigger pockets. bigger pockets, my, my pockets, 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 bigger pockets oh, etc. There's, there's a whole ton of them. Oh, it blocked us for five minutes. How can I get started? Um, I want to flip. So the things to do would be go join your local real estate investing Facebook group, like yep. you said. Join your local real estate investing meetup groups and get to know people you'll find. When you go to those meetups, we didn't really talk about this. The people that go to the meetups are other investors, wholesalers, real estate agents, Contractors, insurance banks, agents, insurance bankers, agents, hard money lenders, yep. private money lenders, even sometimes. So those local real estate investing meetup groups just have everybody you could ever want to talk to when it comes to dealing with real estate at the one place. So it's that's a, where you start. It's a pile of like-minded individuals that are all in the same place to get to know each other. Jack, you're from St. You're Louis. You're from you St. Louis. Should know these lenders. Um, there's a American. Go come to Buyers Club tomorrow. Yeah, come to Buyers Club. We'll, talk, we'll to talk to you personally. Reach out um, to me on Facebook. She said. Was LOL, but she no, meant. Wow. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it like this. Is this cool? It stands for weird ass people, right? Yes. Yeah. So I thought. Nailed you can't it. say ass on. Oh. You can't say ass on on, on YouTube. Oh. What if my town is too small to have a real estate investing meetup? Um, start your own, then that'd be awesome. Well, guess what town is you at? Yeah, what probably town are you way in? down. Um, uh, but uh, hopefully there's there's probably a bigger town that's you know. Within mm -hmm. hopefully a half an hour, 45 minutes that you can go. Our meetups in like northern St. Charles County, there's people that come from South St. Louis City that are an hour away to, and we're in one city. So there's probably one within an hour drive and it's well worth your drive if it's a good one. What is your opinion on buying properties with tenants? Um, I've done it several times. It's not a bad thing, but you have to expect uh, hiccups in the road when taking over tenants because not every previous landlord or tired landlord is going to be truthful to you on what uh, what they've had going on. Maybe they're tired because they've had a crummy tenant in there for a while and they're just exhausted with it. But if you have a good property with a solid tenant and you meet them in person before you close on it, go through their lease and talk to them about what we're going to do in the future, generally you can get off on the right foot and it's really not that big of a pain in the butt. Great answer. Rentals could be an LLC to have to be in personal name. They, I suggest having them in your LLC. Yep. You, can have, you can have up to 10 in your personal name. Um, but I would suggest oh, having old Rob. LLC. More local blood. We love it. We love it. You now that, now that we have you single have family homes and multifamily properties, what do you, you have? Yeah, what do you, unit? 12 unit. 12, 12 unit. Thanks. 12. Sorry, selling you short. Yeah, selling me short. Ah, uh, yeah. What do I for? Actually, it's kind of a toss up. The, the multifamily is nice to add a whole bunch of doors at one time, but the single families are way easier to come by in our area right now. 100% way easier to come by. They are. So they have their. They're, if you didn't know I was on TikTok, I am. I, I did, see it up there now. I actually did TikTok the other day on the pros and cons of each. There's so many pros and cons. It's a great question. I go back and forth. If someone had a gun to my head, that would be a horrible situation. But if they did, I would probably say single families. But I like them both. Multifamilies allow you to grow wealth quicker. There's the You have several doors under one roof. You can, you can affect the value of the property by – running it efficiently raising rents properly and you know being efficient with maintenance so you can literally create value it's called yeah, forced the, appreciation 
the one that we bought in June, we've added almost a hundred thousand dollars in equity in the last what four months yep. since June. So, and then single families, um, they're a little more dependent on the market around it, but they're so easy to sell. They're quick, they're liquid. Uh, multifamilies are a little bit harder to sell. Right. Absolutely. Uh, Dusty just took over. Look yeah, I just took over. I he's, got this. He's comfortable. Uh, I'm going to leave. I'm going to sleep. We got right. this. See ya. Uh, do we need an attorney for an LLC? No. I mean, you go to the local meetups, you can probably find somebody after networking that has all the pre-formed documents that you can plug and play with. And to start an LLC, you can literally do it in your, uh, at your couch at the end of the evening online in your local state. What is your average time frame from closing table until the property is rented and then refinance is completed? Uh, I shoot for 45 days to be done with my rehab. And then I've got another 15 to 30 days in there to place a tenant just to get a good quality tenant. And then I'm as soon as I finish the property, I'm already on the process to refi. Yeah. So that's the thing I talked a little bit earlier about develop relationship with those local banks. Most local banks, when you're just starting, will make you have a tenant in place for one to three, maybe four, four months. months. But Dusty's in this in this stage in his career now, and I'm in the stage in my career now, where as soon as the property is is rehabbed, we get it refinanced and to get out of that short term loan, yeah. private or hard money lender, even before a tenant's in place. Luke and I right. just shot a YouTube video, a couple YouTube videos a day on our latest rental, and we have um, a tenant, a couple, a couple tenants that we're getting ready to approve the property's rehab. And um, we don't have the test on a place yet, and we've already got it refinanced. And already right. praised that we're already working on getting our money back and paying our private I, money. I back. bought a house today, and I've already filled out the paperwork for the refi, and it's got a forty thousand dollar rehab. But I have the paperwork in hand and done to where the second I get close to finishing touches and final clean, I'll send it right to the bank. Found you on TikTok. Thanks. What's going on, Sean? Appreciate my script the bottom. Man, there's a ton of questions coming. We got this. Yes. Um, Roofstock. What's Roofstock? Roofstock. Tell me about Roofstock a little bit. Roofstock it. is a turnkey uh, investment property uh, sales site for out-of-town investors. For sure. Howdy, fellas. Oh, Jakey. Tony, hey, Jake. Man. Yeah. All right. This nice is beard. Raj, what's going on? You are a stud. Yep. All right. So I think I'm caught up. I probably missed a couple of questions. I do apologize. The answers are in our YouTube with other questions or with other videos for sure. What do I go or do to pay taxes on wholesale money? So you're just going to, you're going to have to report that income when you're doing your taxes either yourself, or if you're investing in real estate, you should probably have someone else prepare your taxes. Okay. But um, you just have to pay, um, you just have to pay taxes on them like any, like any other income that you're making. Yeah, when you get a closing statement, you're going to declare that at the end of the year to your tax guy or your CPA. And I wouldn't mind doing this. I'm in the military and want to have financial freedom. Well, first off, thank you for your, service. For your service. We appreciate, appreciate that you. very much. Um, go to freerentalwebinar.com. That'll It's a 90 minute, web, 80 minute webinar I put on. That will get you started, I promise. And we can set up a call and I can help you, I promise. On an as is flip property, when do you get a home inspection before or after you rent? This is, that's another great question. Uh, I'm generally, if I'm buying a house off a wholesaler, I'm generally the one inspecting it. Uh, I don't do any sort of inspections other than that, unless I have some significant uh, issue that I think there's termites, et cetera, something like that. But I don't do any inspections until my rehab is completed. And then I'm starting to go for occupancy. You know, in our area, most of our municipalities uh, require an occupancy inspection for a rental and for the sale of a flip. So you got to do them both. For sure. Do you guys use property managers for your rental properties or do you manage them yourself? You go, then I'll go. I manage all of my uh, my 35 doors myself. Me oh. me, and my my significant other, uh, Shelly, we manage them all ourselves. She manages those, and she manages you. She's, oh, she, her, she's got her hands full. She's a freaking saint, yes. without question. All right, so do you guys use property managers for your um, rental property? So answer that. You do that in-house. We started our own property management company. Um, so we manage our own properties in-house. We have a couple maintenance people, a property manager, a leasing agent. Um, so we kind of manage that all in-house right now. We're growing out an amazing team that we're going to eventually manage other people's property, our people in our office, and then who knows from there. But we we don't like to have other people manage our rental property. No. We put too much time, effort, sweat into the properties. I don't want them to have somebody else manage them when I don't trust their management yeah. and I don't trust how they treat our tenants. We are treating our tenants with respect. We have pride in ownership. So you do them yourself and we do them in-house with a company that I, that Lucas, I, and Brian oversee and own. Yeah. And we make sure that they're treated properly. Correct. That's huge. A, property, a poor property manager make or break your rental portfolio without uh -oh. question. Skip down to the bottom. Again? Nope, right there. Right. Right there. We're close. 
24 year old from St. Louis just found out about faster freedom recently from TikTok of all places. I'm on TikTok, <laughs> and you guys are by far the best people to watch and learn. Thank you, Perfect. Tony. We appreciate come that. To fast, go to Faster House Buyers Club. Come to our meetup tomorrow, tomorrow night. night. Do it. I promise. St. Peter's. It literally could change your life. It changed his changed life. my life. Come to our local real estate investment meetup tomorrow. I'd love to meet you. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that name. I feel like it's not <laughs> even a real 1620. Name. We got it. All right. We'll be able to watch, uh, watch yes, this yeah, back. This, yeah, it's this, all recorded. It's all recorded, and it's all going to be able to be viewed. Are there A's there are there um, states to stay away from as a landlord? In my opinion, yes. So there's certain states that are harder to own rental properties in just because of the laws, the taxes. We're not getting into politics, but just it's the simple fact that the laws make it hard to own rental properties. Those states are California, Oregon, <laughs> New York. You're, you get you get the picture. So there's people in those states that make a killing wholesaling and flipping for sure. But most big time investors in those states. Wholesale and flip in those states and crush it, and then they have rentals in other, other areas. States. Yeah, they have rentals in most other of them do time. that. But uh, but in those states, half the people rent. So those people usually, um, you know, wholesale and flip, and then they put twenty percent down or something. It's hard to do the MER method in those counties. Right. Uh, what's the best way to find contractors? I mean, honestly, I found a majority of my contractors in the beginning uh, were people that I'd worked with in the past with my contracting business, but then the local real estate investment group. Uh, I stumbled into several of, of my top contractors from the local real estate investment groups and I treat them like part of my family and they stay close to me. Yep. Which is a scary place to be. Right. Close to dusty. How do you maintain your credit score in order to refinance or using personal credit for everything refi? Great question. Let me uh, go. Yeah, go, go. Um, yeah. So when you start your LLC, you're using your LLC's credit. You're personally guaranteeing everything, but you use your LLC's credit. Um, so I don't exactly know how the credit little monopoly game is played, but my credit score is really, really good. And I have a loan on 120 single, just smiling. We can see you smiling. She's always texting you. We get it. That's my, like my wife told us that we're both freaking spazzes. She can't watch the stream. Well, who I don't even let us on this. Yes, I know. Right. So <laughs> somebody that owns it, huh? Yeah, right. Um, so, um, so you don't use your personal credit as much, especially after you get started, your business builds credit and you have equity in your business. So, um, I have a loan on 120 residential doors and my credit score is great. So it obviously doesn't affect, like I said, I don't exactly know how the pieces get moved in the Monopoly game there, but. I know it is like playing Monopoly with real money though. Yeah, yeah, especially with our company. How do I find about your next meet? So fasterhousebuyersclub.com is tomorrow's at the Water's Edge Banquet Center at St. Peter's Golf Course. 63376. Go there, Local. look us up, send me a message on um, Instagram if you want more details, but it's right there. Oh gosh, Brian, Brian Johnson. Johnson. Oh boy. What was the average wholesale fee in St. Louis? Like 50 bucks or something? Yeah, I would see. <laughs> I wish. I would I'll see. buy every house you have, Brian, for 50 bucks over what you have it at. Yeah, so Brian, if you have a property, <laughs> then yes. I'll, I'll Brian, I'll pay you 100 bucks for your next property. You always like Mexico. Yeah, you um, take, are you taking us to Mexico, Brian? Can't wait to meet you guys tomorrow. Perfect. This, he, he, Zach, I don't know exactly how to pronounce his name. Shazad, I'm thinking, he, he comments on every single of our YouTube videos. I think he's going to be in our mastermind. What? He's coming tomorrow to the office and then what time are you going to be in the office? I'll three. try to swing in there. Three. three. He's three. awesome. Ah. He come, and then he's coming to the Buyers Club, though. Oh, perfect. I'll so be he there. He comments on all our stuff. He's pumped. He's got some rentals in South City. He's going to be a great addition. Love it. Man. Hell yeah. Love to, let's start. Let's take let's massive action. That's where it's at. Bring it. Is there a virtual version of me if there is? I didn't even say, mention that. Our meetup, we're doing live virtual versions on Facebook. So make sure you're following our Faster Freedom or Faster House Buyers Club on Facebook. Um, it's on Facebook? Yeah, we're doing what? Facebook Live now. Listen, and listen, Pat, record it for us. Um, I haven't gone the YouTube Live with it yet just because I don't want to cannibalize. We have YouTube videos that go out at 4 o'clock on Thursday, so I don't want right. to overtake that. Um, eventually, I might, but we, we don't do it that way for now. Hello from North Carolina. Anita Hell, do you know Anita, her? Yeah, I might I might know her. Anita Benita. All right, Ron, thanks guys for tip. Awesome. Appreciate it. So thank you for watching. We're not quite done yet, oh. but make sure you go to free rentalwebinar.com. I give us a free rental webinar. It teaches you about our course, which is a course, it's a 10-week course that I teach. Lucas, myself, and, <clears throat> and Brian teach on growing your rental portfolio. I've gone live on TikTok three times a day and this. And this. so our voices run out. But I go, um, it's a 10 week course that we teach every single thing we know about growing a rental portfolio from A to Z. We don't hold anything back. It's not one of those, you know, things where we upsell a, a two day, 20 grand boot camp. We don't do that. We're a fraction of that price. Literally, we walk you through every single step of how to grow a rental portfolio from A to Z. And then you have lifetime access to it. It's super powerful. Dusty would have paid for it if you didn't already know everything. Absolutely. By that, for sure. For sure. Yes, for sure.
uh, what's for a second marketing budget to pick up a couple of deals a month? It just depends on what your overhead is. Well, if you, you know. got like, if you got people like Brian and Jake that are running the appointments, you probably spend right. double because double. the close rates are so bad. For sure. <laughs> I'm, I, I would say two to five grand to get a few deals a month, I would say, is, is what you'll need to spend over several months. So see you next Wednesday. We're going live 830 Central. I'll have this con back if everybody liked what they saw. Thank you for watching. Make sure you're following us on all our socials. TikTok. Yes, TikTok. YouTube and Instagram under Faster what Freedom. Follow us on. I'll show you one day oh, when okay. you're older. Got it. Um, so make sure you follow us on all the stuff. We appreciate you guys watching. Thank you a ton. It's been a blast. Dusty's going to finish the rest of his bottle, and I'm going to call Maneuver home. We're going to get some Say bits. bye, Dusty. Bye. You should say bye, Dusty. Bye, Dusty. All right, let's get our – and the broadcast.